Okay, great. So, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to, as you can see, our um, What's New and AMA. AMA, that means Ask Me Anything, um, in case uh, you you just need to know on that. So, yeah, we're we're happy to to get you some some updates and always i mean we really like to offer you the opportunity to uh give us all the questions you got or i don't know problems issues concerns so also if you're just watching the recording you have the option to contact us there are so many so many ways to contact us actually see i can just show you real quick um right here nope not working Awesome. Oh, it says coming up. Hmm. But it says it's the last slide. Great. Well, that's not supposed to be the last slide. <laughs> Whatever. I also have it. <laughs> I also have it in my head. So, I mean, um, I don't know where you where you got the uh, the information about this event today, but you can follow us on Instagram, on LinkedIn. Uh, there is a blog out there. There is a newsletter out there. There is a podcast on digital activism out there. And of course, then there is our community space. Um, uh, it's just the actor space, uh, which has um, several channels. Also to mention, importantly, uh, there is a support channel for all special issues regarding the app. Um, and if you want to be part of our community, just download Actor, uh, join us there. Um, if you're aware of this whole matrix protocol, matrix universe, and already have a matrix account, you can use whatever matrix client and also join our Actor space there. Um, we're happy to, to see you there. So that was me. I'm Jules, as you've probably uh, noticed, I'm all about community stuff and user success in addition. And then there's Ben. Ben is here to get you all the all the updates, especially regarding the uh, the product. So uh, let me let me hand over to Ben. All right, thanks, Jules, for the introduction. I um, have a few things to show you. So this is update one twenty four three four eleven. There's a blog post out there uh, from last week that already also covers mainly um, the things that I'm I want to show you, but there's a few exciting updates. So as, as a reminder, we're doing weekly updates. And then uh, occasionally we, in particular in this quarter, we had a, a few things we wanted to accomplish. And out of that uh, came one big update where we where we um, want to show you a few things that happened over several weeks, actually. Um, we're again at our Kigis uh, Climate Action Group, um, an imaginary uh, place in Africa um, that, we, that we used to show you stuff. And Last time I showed you the awesome feature that you can see as well uh, uh, of including actions inside um, of uh, updates to boost them, to boost them, the information about them. And we have been doing a, a lot of work on the event itself because uh, to be honest before, if you had the event ready, that was great, but the editor was not that great. Um, we have done several things on on the event itself. Uh, most notably, you will see the participants for each event now that uh, RSVP yes to the event. Um, you have two more sections on the bottom uh, for attachments and comments. And let me show you what that looks like on an event that already exists because it's a little quicker than me trying to do this. For example, there was this... Um, Last protest, here we go. And there we have an attachment that shows the the information again that we saw. You can see that for attachments, which are images or videos, you can you can click to to uh, see them at large uh, immediately in the app. You don't have to open it and anything else. And um, you can see here that in the editor, you can do markup, including including links now, which is uh, super useful, allows to to directly add any any features. And then as said, we have a new comment section, so people can comment on that, which is an important step forward on um, making this an actual social experience. Because so far, it was mostly the leaders that can do stuff. But then, like, if you're a regular participant, you could like an update that was about it. Um, of course, there's uh, other information you might want to share as a user, um, as a regular participant. And this is now possible, again, as you can see here, with full mockup for, for the comments. 
comments do not have a reply function. We're still experimenting with what we actually want to do here. Uh, it's intentionally meant to be uh, not a place for intense discussion, but really just a comment. Um, so it's not, it's intentionally a simpler, simpler activity. As mentioned before, one of the most important thing, changes we did was actually, oh no, let's, let's do that from here. <clears throat> Oops. Uh, the event editor itself. And so if you now create an event editor, it looks similar to what we had before, but most notably what you, what you notice will change is the entire section for the time and date that is now using the native system uh, libraries provided by Flutter. You can select a date in the editor. You can directly edit a date if you if you just want to copy paste it from somewhere else. Um, and if you select the date um, before, there was this issue that um, if you forgot to add, uh, send the end date, it was like a really annoying experience. We automatically sent the end date as well um, now, and the same goes for for the time. As you can see here, this emulator is set up to be in UK English. So it has asked me about AM, PM. If your system settings is uh, for 24 hour clock, you will see a 24 hour clock instead. Um, so if we put this to, to 1 PM, you will find that this, the end diet is automatically set to 2 PM as well, which is pretty nice. Um, then the usual, you can create the event, you can add the description as mentioned, <clears throat> you can um, add any further uh, um, markup in in the description of Bob. That is on the event itself. The comments and attachments you just saw also work on pins, as well as if you have it, the labs activated task and task list, which is super useful because very often you have like, hey, this is an accompanying document or there's some other information, or there's some other context you want to add to uh, a pin as well. Um, any user can now um, add that via comments if they have the permissions in, in the channel to do so. Boop, things disappeared, where you go, there we go. All right, so that's about that's about uh, comments and attachments to major, major updates on this side of uh, the usability. <clears throat> Another important update that we did is that we uh, redid the way that the members flow works. So in, in here, but also in the chat view and um, the chat single view as well as the membership view, you, upon clicking a user, now get a user drawer that comes up that gives you several things. Um, first and foremost, you have a quick ability to start a new DM with them, or if you already have a DM with them, directly jump to that DM. Uh, nope, I do not have, this is me, so I don't have a DM with James at the moment. I can quickly copy the username, which is also a often asked feature. Um, then I have, depending on um, the context I'm in, several actions directly for that context, which we're still improving about. For example, I want to mention the user in the chat, so you could click mention. And then uh, you have the specifics for this particular room. So in this case, the Kikis Climate Action Group that allows me to um, change the, the power level of that person, which was before directly in this case. Or um, this is a new, newly added kick and kick and ban. Um, so kick just throws a person out of the space or, or chat that you're in. Um, of course, this is only possible if you have uh, either moderation or admin powers by default, or if you changed it, higher levels, different levels. And kick and ban means that um, the user is not only kicked, but they can also not rejoin until the ban is lifted. Um, this is very often used when you find somebody uh, doing harmful things or like they have been kicked as a warning. This is a common practice back from IRC days already where you're like, hey, this was enough. You kick them, which is also a, a visible event to the others. And then um, they can still rejoin and they get, well, they got kicked. So they were thrown out of the window and come back in the door and they're like, okay, hope you get the message. Otherwise we have to ban you for doing this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, we we will continue on improving this. There's a few more options you can see here. I can um, <clears throat> block block the user personally. So a user block um, already existed beforehand, but it's now a lot quicker and easier to do. So if that person keeps sending me invitations for DMs or keeps annoying me personally, I can say I, I want to block them. 
and then I won't see their messages, their chat messages in chat rooms that they're in, and uh, they are not able to to invite me to other things anymore. <clears throat> yeah, that's it on the user drawer. And then um, the last part I would like to show you today is about um, an onboarding feature. So there have been uh, several things done on the onboarding flow itself, including like um, the the password. Um, you can toggle the password in the login and the registration flow. So it's a lot easier to see what's happened uh, or if you mistyped it. Um, there are several updates there and there are several updates following. We're working a lot on this. One of the things that are not, unfortunately, we didn't make for this, this um, release, but will be in the release or from this Thursday on, um, is a new, uh, how do you call that, startup guide, if you will. So if, if you're entering for the first time on this device, um, it will highlight certain aspects of the UI and tell you about them, give you a little more information about what the, what this kind of is. Because as much we try to make it intuitive, nothing is actually ever intuitive. And we have a few things that are structurally different in many other ways. So we, we'd like to have people understand them. Um, but another very important onboarding feature we did is that we have multi-language support now. That means that all the strings you see here, and you see a few of them, are currently in English because that is my my system's language. And depending on your system language, we will choose the default language that fits. Right now, we only have one other language that has like about 30% coverage uh, for testing this entire feature. But you can see the moment I switch this, the language already changed uh, up here. And uh, you can see that there's a few things here as well. Um, as mentioned, like. German itself is only about 30% covered in this release. And it's um, therefore like you, you have as fallback, you can see still still some uh, English in here as well. Like language itself is also still English or users you blocked is still in, in English. So there's a, there's a mix. But the important thing I want, why I mentioned this is that behind that, whoop, I need to share a different screen now. There we go. Let me quickly jump here. Is let me make it smaller so you can see more. Is the um, an integration with a, an online an online tool which is called Weblate, which you can find on Weblateactor.global. It's a website that anybody can log in and start translating the app. Um, which is pretty cool in my opinion. So it's an online tool where you can say like once you logged in and um, and join the the app. You can say like I want to I want to add another language, one that I know of, and you can start uh, translating, or you can contribute to an existing one, like in this case Deutsch German, um, and uh, start translating th things that have changed. So these these strings are automatically updated whenever we do changes on on our code base. So even before releases. Um, and you can even set it up so that you get an email notification when stuff changes so that your, your translation isn't complete anymore. Um, right now, as mentioned before, we have German has about 55%. Um, we haven't yet fully set on, settled on this, but the idea is that when a language has between 60 or 80% or something, we will start including it in the, in the options. So if you, if one of the reasons your community doesn't doesn't use it yet is that it is not available in the local the native language. Um, I'm inviting you to join uh, Weblate Actor Global and and start translating into the language that you need. Because at the end of the day, we will, as a team, not be able to provide all languages that we would like to see. We're just too few people with not knowing enough of many of these languages. Um, so if you if you want to see any other language added. Be our guest. Uh, there will be another blog post about this and also helping you with a little more guidance on how to do this. Um, also some recommendations of certain um, questions that you have when you start translating stuff, like do I want to translate everything? Do I translate, for example, in German, we decided that the word space we could translate, but we will keep it as a, as a brand term that um, is then also available to be seen in, in documentation that you get a recognition because the German translation would imply too many other things that don't really make sense in that context. So there's like these kind of questions you have to ask yourself, but it's 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 not that hard. And you can do it when you're not that um, 
And yeah, like I'm I'm usually doing it in the evening when I'm a little tired, but I still want to do something, then I'll start translating stuff. Uh yeah, uh that's that's the most important things I wanted to share with you. Um a reminder that uh you can find all of that also in the blog post. Um talking about all of that, uh, showing you more details. Um of course there's several other things that we have we have fixed. Um you can see some of them on, on the bottom here. But that's that's the main things. Um that's it from the update side. I would like to take a, a brief moment as well. I'm going to stop the sharing for that. Um, we don't we don't yet have that published, but there will be a blog post this week. Uh, we know we're a little late. We have quarterly goals or quests, or how we call them, um, and we, due to sickness and some other leaves, we're not able to finish that up by the end of the last quarter, but we have finished all of that up. We have finalized this, and there's going to be an um, announcement about the about the quest that we, we are embarking on, especially on the product side, I would like to share with you preemptively. Um, and that is mainly two things. There's two main quests that we look at in this quarter. On one side, what we call getting into ready state. That is everything that stops people from using it, that stops people from onboarding, that um, can be as, as hard as I started in blocks, which we had seen until yesterday on iOS. There's specific iOS versions not supported anymore by Apple, but apparently people still use them. Um, so we we decided to still support um, iOS 15, where there's a where's a crashing bug at the beginning, which is super annoying. But it goes to the point where um, onboarding feedback we are getting, specific parts of the application just are not intuitive. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't really work. And so we we're not limiting ourselves to just bug fixes on this, but anything that that we need to improve um, for people to be able to use it. And so also these kind of things, even if they require multiple weeks of actually thinking about it, designing it, trying to do different design iterations, figuring them out, these are this is the main quest for us. Um, there's also several other bugs, of course, that are non-critical or that are not really stopping people. We have a side quest as usual for bug fixes, cleaner UI, all of that. But anything that makes the UI better, that makes the usability better, um, gets a main gets a main quest. The other main quest is that uh, we want to switch to UniFFI Dart. Um, so just a big, really small understanding. So we use Flutter, which is this UI framework, allows us to build the actual application on top. Um, but in, in the core, we use a different language called Rust um, that is super secure, that allows us to, to build very fast on the actual cryptography and, and the, the, the inner workings of the system to talk to basically talk to metrics protocol. Um, and in between that, there's this thin layer, um, which we have built out of a, a hackathon project that we have built upon, and that has run its course. Um, it simply has a few architectural decisions made at the very beginning, which are fine at the time, uh, which limit a lot, a, a lot of things that we can do. Um, and we've been working around that for the last one and a half years, but on the on the offside, um, as, a, as a side quest over the last two quarters, we've also worked on and a re-implementation of this on a different Mozilla-based project called UniFFI that allows us to do a lot more things a lot better. And we've come to the point that now a lot of things are simply struck by this layer not allowing us to do certain things. And so um, one big one is what you call sliding sync, which is a better syncing mechanism that we currently have. If you have a big account, it take, takes a minute or more at the beginning to start up. Um, that is pretty annoying. Um, that is not a problem, luckily, for most of our users at this point, because most of them are novice to Matrix, so they don't have big accounts yet. But of course, over time, it's going to be a problem. And so we will attempt to replace this middle layer, which is, of course, a, a daunting enterprise <laughs> on, on any engineering part in that you want to replace the, the glue in between two, two of the things. Um, so we we do that in several attempts um, with the expectations that we will refine problems, have to abandon the attempt and uh, fix things first and then try a fresh attempt later. Um, and fingers crossed, we get this done in this quarter. Let's see. Um, the point of quest is that we embark on them not knowing if we're going to make it. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll see. Um, on, on that, that is the main quest. So we're not... We will not be focusing on building. I'm, I'm a big, big proposer of saying things that are not happening. We will not be doing sliding sync itself this this quarter. 
um, if we experiment with encrypted spaces, it will be uh, on a low flame um, in the background. It hasn't have a high priority. Um, we will not be working on, on new features in general. Like we're not going to add, some people ask for polls or votes or this kind of thing. These are, things are sounding si simple, but they become very quickly, very complex and can take like its own, its own course. Um, so we rather want to make something that what well, we currently have usable for users and then at the later stage, uh, once we have a, a good amount of people work with them together um, and see what we actually want to add in terms of features. That said, um, one side quest we have um, next to to the tech to the um, tech and clean UI bug fixing one is what is called tighter integration. So in the last update, we already showed you one integration that we, we have, which is between the calendar and the update. So an update allows you to include the calendar. Um, and we have several other ideas of how these things could be integrated and not nicer and um, be really making the use case of why, why you want this separation of of content and how you make that easy. A very simple uh, example that always comes to mind is you have something in a chat that now should become a pin. So long press, save this as pin to this in this space, very obvious, nice integration, um, or sharing a news um, into a, a regular chat channel is another one. Um, because like, especially if you use any of the integrations of like Signal or WhatsApp or this kind of stuff, they don't have access to this to this nice view of she seeing the news or sharing that into this channel with just a few clicks is another one. Um, however, that is a side quest. Um, this uh, are interesting things and exciting things. As soon as we have multiple people or most of the people saying like, ah, if we had this, we would actually onboard, it also becomes um, more of a, a main quest issue because it's, a, it's then something about um, unblocking people from using it. But there's several other things where we think like, I don't know, like, one example is super invites in the action uh, in the uh, in the update is is an example that if you create a new set sub of spaces and chats and that kind of stuff and you want to tell your your group about it and you have them a one click join a bunch of rooms and spaces that sounds just cool um, but uh, we will we will work on that on the both end uh, depending on how many things are in the main quest um, are, are necessary to to focus on instead all of that of course blog post afterwards. Um, and with that, I think um, I'm through with the update part of what's new and what's happening. Nice. Um, right that now. was fast and concrete. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Thanks for fast? Us. I speak fast sometimes. I, I noticed that. But I guess it was like just just right. Um, I mean, yeah, I, for... in the recording, you can you can also just make it slower and you know, I'm talking too fast. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is one of the benefits of recordings is you can you can choose your own adventure speed. So yeah, but so... I like to speed run. Let's speed run this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was that was pretty cool. Not only updating, uh, but also uh, getting hyped for the upcoming weeks and, and months. Um, we really like to be transparent and kind of like call it build in public um, to really like, yeah, um, share our journey and include you people yeah. and yeah, work with your, your feedback or your responses and yeah, put all of that together and then grow and move on and stuff. So uh, yeah, that was also pretty nice. Um, do we actually have questions like whether questions um handed in uh before this meet coming up not to me yeah also not not to me not not that concrete i mean part of part of this is kind of like surprising in case people just get the updates so um what can you ask <laughs> beforehand um okay uh, so there's there's one one thing that um, has been asked. It just wasn't part of the um, explicit ask for the AMA. But uh, next to the product quests, we still have several other quests. And one of them is that um, Emila in particular are onboarding with, with a bunch of groups. So if you've seen this, if you're interested in this, if you... Um, in particular, if, if you're not the one who can decide about using Actor, but you have someone else and you would like us to um, jump on a call with them, um, show them the app, show what's happening, show what they can do. 
um, you can definitely reach out and, and we are happy to to facilitate any of that kind of stuff. We're doing this um, a lot this quarter. We really think we have something that is round enough. We have fixed a bunch of really severe bugs in the last um, several uh, updates as well. Um, like one, I forgot to mention that, that's an actually important one. Um, one of them was that several people, including us, were experiencing that the updates you were seeing on a specific space were not necessarily synchronized across all users and devices. Um, and we found that bug. We found a bug that was not just you doing something wrong, it was really a bug in the application. Um, very, very deep in, in down in the system, uh, mm. in the plumbing of the system where things didn't go right and then any following things on that space were just not processed. Um, and we found it, we fixed it, and we have not experienced anything since, similar since. Like, uh, there's still like a few UI fixes where, for example, the task list, um, a task, if you change the due date, it doesn't automatically show in the UI. You have to go back and then go back in and then you see it. But that's just UI stuff. Uh, it's not the original problem anymore. Whenever you do changes, as soon as you have, as long as you have a halfway decent connection, it shows up almost immediately now um, for you and the other devices. So um, that is that is uh, really in a in a position right now that we are very confident that it should be should be something that a lot more people should try out and figure out. And with us to get to figure out how you actually use this. Like there's just a bunch of features that we don't yet know. Um, and we have some imagination and we use ourselves how they can be used, but it would be good to see more people use cases and uh, figure out how they how that works for them and what needs to change. Yes, yes, yes. There will be definitely more stuff coming up um, regarding, I mean, it's kind of like co-creation. We really need yeah. your your input. This whole development depends on on your input. So yeah, we will definitely get back to that. So stay tuned for that. Also, more events coming up. Some kind of like expert talks on certain issues in in the space of digital activism, and also this kind of like onboarding support. Um, what what Ben mentioned at the uh, just um, some some minutes ago, sex ago. Um, that's uh, especially for like concrete groups um, who are like already set up and whatever, uh, looking for, for a new app, for a new tool. Uh, but we also want to kind of like broaden that and give that support, that, that onboarding, um, I don't know, yeah, uh, companionship, uh, offer that to, to all people out there. So kind of like yeah. events regarding that coming up. And then um, remember, there is always within the actor space, there is a specific support channel. So it's kind of like 24 seven customer support. <laughs> so if there's anything popping up and you get like stuck with something or confused, something doesn't work, um, use that one. Or of course um, this, how's that called again? When you like shake the app um, and then you have- A, the a rage, a rage shake. Yeah, exactly. Because you shake out of rage. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So do that, and then you can also report stuff, stuff to us. Yeah. There you go. There it is. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that was an example of um, good rage, but for all kinds of rages, um, that works. Um, yeah, any type yeah. of bugs, any types of problems you see, you can uh, click the button to include a screenshot. Um, very often, um, especially if you have crashes or problems, it's very good to include the logs as well. These are all handled um, in a private repo. So, of course, nothing of that is shared um, outside of, out of the people that need to know um, to, to, debug, um, to debug the problem. Um, that's definitely very helpful. Um, and if you want us to get back to you about this problem, once we have some input or we have other questions, you can also include your metrics ID. So the user ID I have on Actor. And then we can tell you when it's fixed. Yes, yes, yes. You can find it also every one of us um, in the actor space on metrics, of course. Uh, so just, yeah, I mean, this is our website with all the download links in case you don't have the actor app yet. And also if you want to join our community space, we are not that yet, uh, not yet there. Um, here's everything you need to know to, to get there. To find us, it's all on our website. Um, just to show you that too. So, I guess that's it for yeah. for today. 
Yep. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>